Hello everyone, uh, this is Juan Freire and in this opportunity I'm presenting uh, research we did uh, with colleagues from the Nanjing University in China and the University of Surrey uh, in England. And this work is part of the distinct workshop, the Space Terrestrial Internetworking Workshop, uh, uh, executed uh, within the conference of YC, the IEEE Conference mm -hmm. on Wireless for Space and Extreme Environment. Um, the title of this research is called Performance Evaluation of Quick with BBR in Satellite Internet. So, uh, it's of everyone knows that Google has been pursuing for quite a while uh, different technologies that could support the continuously growing uh, users and bandwidth and throughput and low latency uh, utilization of the internet. Um, they have been specifically focused in the, in basically media, video, uh, and also uh, web uh, page surfing, um, and they have particularly proposed uh, two different uh, technologies that we are leveraging in this research. Uh, one of them is, is a protocol which is called QUIC, that stands for QUIC UDP Internet Connection, and as many of you know, uh, current HTTP and web browsing uh, protocol basically is based on TCP, on Transport Control Protocol, as an underlying layer, which uh, basically provides congestion control, control flow, and error correction. Um, but they are now starting, and they actually are starting to use this quick protocol, which is run as over UDP. We are going to see uh, what uh, does this actually mean. Um, in this on the protocol side and on the algorith algorithm side, there is also uh, quite a research now in what's called bottleneck bandwidth and round tree propagation time, BBR, congestion control algorithm. And we're going to take a quick look of what uh, this algorithm are and how they actually um, behave how, uh, in, in, in a satellite uh, network. So uh, the quick protocol uh, basically provides low latency, multiplexer and encrypted reliable transport. And we're going to see these three uh, aspects in, in detail in a few slides. But many of you would say that, uh, that this is something that's quite already supported by current HTTPS traffic, which is the secure expression of HTTP. Um, but we're going to see how Quick actually leverage some existing features of uh, HTTPS and actually increase and improve the latency aspect of the protocol. So uh, Quick, uh, as we said, runs on top of UDP of user data attack and protocol. And it, this are, is already deployed at uh, different servers of Google. Uh, and it's actually this very moment is handling billion of requests from browsers and mobile apps as we speak uh, without even noticing. Um, this is like this protocol is slowly starting to replace uh, what we today know uh, as HTTPS, even without knowing. And you know, Google actually uses uh, most of Android phones and Chrome applications, and so they're starting to, without users to really know, to migrate um, to these more modern protocols for, for web browsing. Um, this also, as I mentioned, also impacts, has impact on YouTube, uh, particularly, for which um, we're going to also uh, observe uh, later that some similar significant improvement in, in terms of throughput has been achieved with these new new technologies that Google is pushing. Um, uh, interesting, oh, interestingly, over 30% of Google egress traffic today uh, is actually carried by the, this quick protocol we are talking today. And this actually means around 7% of the global internet traffic, which is quite significant. So uh, quick actually uh, sits um, in, 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 the, as, in the protocol stack as, as shown in, in this picture. So traditional HTTP approach uh, used TLS as an un underlying layer and TCP as another un underlying layer on top of IP. Uh, this basically provided con congestion control and loss recovery and so on as many of us know. HTTP typically sits on the user space. This is the, the, the web browser that we typically use on the, on the user space where all the TLS and the TCP functionality remains on the kernel space of, uh, of the operating system. 
Um, however, this quick approach is different in the sense that some of this functionality that was on the current space has, is now being moved to the user space. And in particularly, uh, I'm referring to TLS, uh, security and key negotiation support. Um, congestion and control and loss recovery is also moved to the user space. Uh, developers of Quick actually claim that this allows browser to have more control on how the data is uh, basically accommodated uh, in underlying protocols. So they can have like specific um, congestion control or loss recovery or negotiation features for a specific type of data. And this being this in the user space allows the application to be uh, more in control of this data flow. And also they claim that this enables uh, easier uh, evolution and upgrades uh, of, the, of the version of the protocol. So one of the main features of Quick is zero round trip time connection, and this is uh, this is crucial in in terms of web browsing because uh, it is already proven that the page load time is strongly related to latency and not necessarily bandwidth. And this is what this graph practically shows that as we increase in bandwidth, the page load time is stabilized uh, and doesn't and it basically hits a limit in terms of, 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 of load time in, in, in this time, in this case it's pressed in milliseconds. But as we decrease the latency between the server and the client, the page load time drastically is, re is drastically reduced uh, with, with, the, with the reduction of time as well. So uh, this is the basically the, the main motivation for making quick uh, a zero round trip time connection protocol as we will see in the following slide. So we know that TCP, uh, when operating with TLS, use a three-way handshake, and also TLS has some other handshakes for, for security and key exchange, which makes up a total of about three round-trip time delay for establishing a connection with a traditional HTTP over TLS over TCP. What Quick does basically is combine this session establishment and secure key agreement in a single handshake. So basically, this takes uh, only one round trip time on the first connection only because also a global ID of 64 bits is stored um, on both uh, on the client and the server. Basically, a, a, a unique identifier for this transaction. And this implies that future transaction between these two nodes can basically start from scratch with no delay at all, uh, meaning that a zero round trip time connection delay can be achieved in subsequent connections. So this is basically what we're saying. This is how, how quick uh, works. So TCP, uh, we can see here a three-way handshake of TCP. TCP plus TLS, it's a little bit more uh, complex in terms of key exchange and so on. And these, these, these are basically symbolic timings to have an idea of what are the magnitudes in play. And then we have the quick uh, protocol, which is equivalent to the TCP plus TLS solution mm -hmm. with only a single handshake of uh, 100 milliseconds on the first. Uh, connection with the server and zero milliseconds uh, in subsequent connection as we have mentioned in the previous slides. So, and the second uh, feature of Quick is multiplexing. And multiplexing is not something new in Quick, it's uh, in HTTP. So, to take a look uh, at how HTTP evolved in this, in this last year, uh, we, we have to consider that a modern web page is basically, as we see here in the picture, uh, a set of objects displayed in a, in a user interface. In this, in this case, we are showing five objects, which each of them might have a different, uh, maybe one an image, another text, another can be uh, an ad uh, being hosted in, in a remote server. Um, the first version, the early version of HTTP, used uh, HTTP and TLS. And in this case, we can see that for each object of the HTTP page, uh, there was a single connection established with the server in order to get the particular object of this web page. Obviously, this is uh, terrific uh, in terms of performance, as I need to to, to scratch uh, to start from scratch a new connection for uh, for each object. But this was a very early uh, version of HTTP. Uh, subsequent versions uh, improve this by just not uh, doing a handshake for each object but to have a, a persistent connection with the server which actually works if and only if all these objects are stored in the same server which is not the, the general case as i mentioned 
some uh, ads or some publicity are typically stored in another server. So this actually implies that the different TCP connection has to be established for, for the other objects. Um, another feature of HTTP 1.1 uh, was also pipelining. And this, uh, instead of doing like a get and receive one object at a time, the client is able to make like a bulk request of objects. And this object were basically pipelined and streamed back from the server to the to the client uh, actually improving the the latency uh, of of loading a, a web page here. So, um, but what happened then is that one of the problem of pipelining is that one object is basically transmitted after the other in a subsequent fashion. So object one, then two, then three, and so on. Um, the problem is is what head head of line blocking, meaning that. Uh, if one of these objects basically was corrupted on the way or something what wrong happened with that, basically the subsequent object in the string were blocked until this object was uh, successfully transmitted. And this was solved in, in, in HTTP2, which also was called Speedy, uh, also developed by Google in recent years. Um, basically, Speedy enabled multiplexing in, in terms that uh, if one of these objects uh, failed, uh, different streams of objects were uh, transmitted in, uh, in, let's say, like in a virtual channel way uh, to the client, uh, just basically removing this head of the line blocking uh, problem, limitation. And Quicks basically leverages of this uh, evolution of HTTP, um, but in further improving the delay and the latency by removing the TCP handshakes and the TLS handshake um, of older HTTP version, and this is done basically by removing TCP of the underlying layer and starting and using UDP as a transfer protocol. And this is what the state of the art of HTTP as we speak, and this is currently being standardized as the version 3 of the HTTP protocol. So this is a quick slide also uh, highlighting the head of line blocking problem I mentioned about um, a, when you have like pipelining one object after the other and the difference when uh, this, uh, these streams of objects actually are independent of each other and then you can basically continue uh, downloading streams of objects even though uh, one of them basically runs into congestion or, uh, or, or any type of problem like corruptions and, and so on. So be, an, another Technology that's basically is uh, in parallel with Quick is BBR. Um, BBR is uh, is a congestion control algorithm, and as we know, uh, traditional TCP-based congestion control algorithm uh, infer congestion indirectly via estimating the bottleneck and the minimum uh, round trip time that was possible in a in a given end-to-end -end connection. And this is because it's very difficult to measure uh, in internet uh, what's the status of the different queues and the routers on, on the path to go to the other destination. So the only way of doing things is just by inferring by other uh, metrics or other uh, measurements what is the congestion level in, in, in the network. And this is typically done by measuring two type of things. One of them is the loss, the packet loss, which basically can be mapped to the concept that uh, a buffer is fooled and the buffer is, start, is overflowed and packets are starting, uh, starting to be dropped. And this packet drop basically requires retransmission afterwards. And this can be a good indication that uh, the network is congested and I can just basically throttle back my, my, my transfer. Um, and the other way of doing this is delay based. Basically, uh, I can keep track of the delay of the AC case that I'm receiving from my receiver and based on, on this delay, I can actually prove and, 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 and understand how is the, the, con the, the queue status of the router on the path toward the destination. TCP Reno and TCP Cubic uh, are two types of congestion control based on packet loss. And we're going to see Cubic as one of the benchmarks because it's one of the most popular congestion control currently used in TCP. Um, most of the internet traffic of flowing on TCP is using this uh, congestion control uh, approach. And then I also want to highlight TCP Vega, which is the de a delay based approach, which is um, unfortunately not so much used because one of the problems of delay based approach is that um, 
they they tend to be very slow at reacting on how the uh, the, 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 the bandwidth of the channel evolves. So for instance, with TCP Viga, you can say, okay, I'm having a, my, my, my current round trip mm -hmm. time is, let's say one second. And, and as soon as the time drops, I'm starting to read that um, my network is congested and therefore I'm throttling down my, my bandwidth. Uh, and therefore uh, this can actually uh, runs into what's called uh, concurrency problems because if another TCP control algorithm is more aggressive can quickly occupy uh, a space of bandwidth that I was using in the first place um, because they are more aggressive and TCP Viga basically uh, derives in, in, in basically over um, it's, it's overcrowded uh, by other uh, TCP uh, congestion algorithms such as Cubic for instance so this is basically why Cubic uh, is the most popular uh, congestion control using today. And BVR basically comes to uh, further improve uh, cubic performance. And the way of BVR doing this is basically uh, it direct directly proves the bottleneck bandwidth on, 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 the, on the channel and estimate the minimum round trip time over a time window. Uh, in this way, basically, BVR avoids to fill uh, the buffers of intermediate nodes by doing this because VBR actually can measure what's the real bandwidth happening at this very moment and this is what the data, the data rate that you're finally going to see uh, flowing out of the server uh, of the client in BVR. Uh, but this is, is still done in such a way that this doesn't run into the problem as, uh, that we see in TCP Viga that, um, that we have previously mentioned and we're going to see why because the difference here is that BVR is proving this I mean it, it takes a few seconds a few milliseconds actually to only test send packets and test what's the bottleneck of, uh, of bandwidth of, of the network and based on this proof it takes decision and then it stabilizes the throughput and it's continue through time uh, until the next proving uh, stage begins. Um, BVR has been it's currently being deployed at, at, at different uh, platforms at the Google um, also at YouTube and they are actually uh, accusing around a 4% of average throughput improvement at, at YouTube with, using BVR so this this is quite promising in terms of, of the internet um, well and this is this BVR uh, is, is actually open source as part of the Linux kernel and it's basically an optional scheme for quick being cubic the default one as we previously mentioned in this work, we're going to compare uh, TCP cubic with BBR in, in satellite networks using the quick protocol. This is just a quick uh, chart, uh, basically of what's the improvement in terms of network throughput that YouTube uh, has been measuring by using BBR. Um, in, and we can see the different country has different values. So we can see that this, we can see that it's an average of between five percent or something uh, around that number. The, uh, of throughput improvement by using this this, con this new congestion control algorithm. So BBR uh, measures two, two, two different factors. One of them is the bandwidth of the bottleneck. Um, the bandwidth of the bottleneck is basically what's the data rate, the delivery rate that I can have during a given time window based on the received ACK. So I have during a given time, a time slot, I send uh, a, a, a high number of packets and during some some time window and I then receive these ACKs and basically on, on this uh, I can count this ACK and I can estimate what's the bandwidth of the bottleneck at this very instantaneous windows moment um, and I'm also basically based on this ACK I can estimate which was the, out, out of the receive ACK what was the minimum routing time over the window um, and this is considered the estimation of the propagation time this is this assumes this minimum round trip time assumes uh, that there was no queuing delay. Uh, obviously, this is also an inference somehow, uh, but still uh, it's considered like this. Um, and then there is like an egg or noise parameter uh, eta represented in, in the equation that we're going to show in the next slide. So you can see here that the view rate is basically uh, this number of packets that were ACK over our time window. And then I c uh, the maximum delivery rate of, of, all of this proof is actually the bandwidth of, of, of the bottleneck. And this is the bandwidth that I'm going to use to, 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 to send my packet to VR. 
And then I have this uh, round trip time uh, propagation, the round trip propagation time, which is basically also the minimum uh, value of uh, this measure routing time here, which actually is the, the real minimum round trip time plus some network noise, which considers pla uh, queuing and so on. So, or, or I, I spend a few words talking about Quick and BBR, and the real uh, objective of this work is to, 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 to see how this actually applies to satellite internet. This BBR, uh, uh, an appealing solution. This is the question we want to answer. Um, so, and we know that satellite internet basically is, is, is appealing because it's, uh, they provide wide coverage, high bandwidth and broadcasting capabilities and has many applications, scenarios, namely sky, marine, uh, underdeveloped areas we are on generally uh, areas without infrastructure. Um, we know that satellite links are challenged by long propagation delay and high bit error rates. And neither of these two are conditions of, of, of the internet. So actually understanding how BBR and, and Quick behaves in a satellite uh, link uh, is of interest for the community. Um, which is already know that TCP already actually deteriorates the HTTP based web experience. We want to see how this holds in, in, in terms of Quick. And we're, we're basically um, evaluate this BBR in satellite internet, uh, which is, has not been uh, seen so far in, in the literature. So we run the experiments. We basically have uh, the following scenario. We have a server, a satellite terminal that uh, transmit data to a, to a geostationary satellite or a LEO satellite. We're going to see that this will basically impact the round trip time and the propagation time that then this information flies back to a satellite gateway and then we have the client uh, on, on the other side of, of this end-to-end uh, -end path. And the way of doing this is was uh, with we are in a, a testbed and these are some high level specification of, of this uh, testbed. We have two versions for the testbed. One of them is a single client and then a multiple client uh, we're, because we also want to evaluate how uh, this BBR uh, basically competes with Quick, uh, which one of the main uh, promises of BBR is that it does not, um, let's say, uh, occupies uh, existing TCP uh, volume. Um, basically, they can share the um, and provide some fair access to the channel at the same time. And these are the specification of the machine we're using, that the version of the Apache server, the Chromium also version with the Quick version we're using. And we have uh, an index HTML basically with several JPEGs on charge on it with different sizes as a test uh, of the web page that we want to load. And we are measuring all uh, the following plots with wire, Wireshark. And we basically play with the round trip time parameters here. And uh, we play from 200, 400, and, uh, and up to 1,000 milliseconds the round trip time delay. So it's a very pessimistic case. Um, we also will play with the packet load rate to see how these different schemes behave with different packet error, error rates. We will, however, uh, track, um, then basically stay uh, the, the page, the page size and the number of objects are different uh, version of the web page we are measuring and we're going to average the result of all these type of web pages uh, and, and see how uh, the different parameters provides different throughput uh, for the scenario. And this is the results we see in terms of throughput versus round trip time. And we can see that Cubic uh, outperforms BBR, um, especially uh, when, in both cases, right? And even for long, for long round trip times, Cubic uh, provides better results than, than, than BBR. Um, and the reason we have because of this is that, as we mentioned, that BBR estimate bandwidth via proving the channel during the time window. And the longer the round trip time delay is, uh, the more, the less packets that we're actually ACKing during this period, right? Um, this basically uh, the impacts, has a direct impact on what's the bandwidth bottleneck that we're actually having uh, in, 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 in the network, right? And this is something that in Cubic does not happen because Cubic, uh, is, is, as we mentioned, is, a, is an error. Uh, it's a packet error based uh, congestion control mechanism. And in this case, uh, the high round trip time for Cubic is analog 
to a highly overloaded buffer uh, or, or a very large buffer in the middle, in the, in the path toward the destination. Uh, so basically, Cubic just keep filling up this buffer as, ma as fast as it can. So in somehow it's like Cubic see the very long round trip time delay as a, as, a long, as a long buffer, as a big buffer holding data for us uh, for a longer period, for a long period of time. But this, but this is changes when, when the packet loss is present. And this makes sense with, with the hypothesis we were holding, right? So when packet loss appears uh, and increases, there is a moment when BBR becomes more performance in terms of throughput. And again, Cubic is a packet loss uh, based congestion control and Cubic has no way to dis discriminate when a packet is dropped because a congestion scenario or is dropped because um, a, a real error in the channel. And so Cubic in general interprets that uh, high packet loss is, is a highly congested case so when pack for high packet loss rate, Cubic drastically drops down the throughput. Um, this is not the case of BBR. That BBR will still proving the channel. Maybe in this proving stage, um, some ACKs are lost in the path and so on. But BBR is only taking care of the actual bandwidth bottleneck based on the minimum uh, round trip time measurement he is having. So uh, it's quite insensitive to packet loss. So BBR is behaving better uh, in, in, in throughput in terms uh, when we increase the packet loss rate. And this packet loss rate, this is another way of expressing the same uh, study. So the total size of the web page over the page load time uh, is shown here. So it's, this is also known as good put. And the same uh, result uh, is expressed here for the different round trip times delays and different uh, packet loads. So here we see that um, for for 400 milliseconds, there is a very high, very big difference between uh, uh, BBR and Cubic. Uh, this is where the maximum difference is is, of, is observable in, in the, between these three different cases. Um, something interesting to see, and this is the fairness evaluation on, on the test bench where you are using two different clients that compete for the same bandwidth uh, against a server. Um, something that we are observing here, uh, two, two facts basically. One of them is that actually Cubic and BBR are very fair in how they share the bandwidth. I mean, there is not one overcrowding the other overwhelming the other uh, which is especially this is what specifically BBR was designed and this is what TCP Vega for instance is not able to do and um, and we also see these little peaks here that pretty com much corresponds to when BBR is proving the channel we are not here measuring the data rate uh, this is the efficient data rate this is HTTP application level data rate but actually when BBR uh, proves the channel they don't use uh, any any transmission is only um, the packets that are flowing uh, very small packets to measure the bandwidth uh, back and forth on the routing time and this is where basically cubic sees that more bandwidth is available in the network and is try to take it back and the way BBR is able to once the BBR um, uh, is finished is is proof it's actually start with a very aggressive throughput in order to shake, uh, let's say the the, the, the congestion control uh, algorithm or the other ones, uh, and balance again the fairness of, of this um, of, of the bandwidth utilization between different nodes. So, uh, in this work, we studied Quick uh, with different cubic and BBR congestion algorithm in satellite-based internet. Uh, so uh, quick with cubic provide higher throughput for routing times for all routing time when no packet loss is present. So it's quick is, is, is better in, in, in errorless uh, scenarios, but we know that the satellite scenario is not the case. Um, for these cases, BBR is actually uh, proved to be more efficient and is able to keep transmission speed even when packet loss rate grows because uh, it's not a packet loss based congestion control algorithm. So the outlook for this and the future is um, that uh, e-read cubic and BBR approaches could be considered for satellite internet and this is uh, future efforts and, and research we're currently doing. So with this I, term, I conclude my presentation. 
and I'm open for questions or comments. Thank you very much for your time.